Sir David Attenborough, and this isn't a BBC documentary about nature. This is a short film about how we can shape our relationship to food with a small tweak of perspective and awareness. It's not a world where we eat to live, as animals do, or live to eat, as those who are prisoners to food do. The ideal is somewhere in between, a balance that is very personal, yet potentially universal in its effectiveness. There are many challenges when dealing with food, challenges that have been addressed by every possible expert within the various fields of nutrition, biology, and other applicable sciences. The typology, quantity, and quality of food is not our topic. We all have moments when we take in the good and at times the bad. So I'm not going to advise you on the what's, how's, and why's of eating this or that. Bad fats, good fats, greens, junk food, snacking. For the purposes of our discussion, all food is kosher, halal. If what you eat is not the subject of our discussion, then what is? The goal is to take a very simple step in re-establishing our relationship with food by shifting our mindset by a very small but effective degree. The single move on how to live life with food has been tangibly effective with many societies. Today, some still carry on with this mindset that has helped them to say the least, fend off the major health and wellness crises that have become part of our collective existence. French society has been an enigma when observing their relationship to food. The French eat everything. And I mean everything. Butter, butter, and even more butter. Lathered daily onto portions of baguettes and croissants. Alcohol is consumed routinely. Yet surprisingly, the French don't appear to be struggling as much as others with issues concerning weight or other food-related ailments. This is referred to as the French paradox. Why is this? Is it because of their moderation? This very well could be the case, but is moderation a cause of their success or an effect? Eastern cultures like Japan and Korea have also taken the notion of food beyond the realms of pure sustenance, taste, and satiety. Raw ingredients are selected of the highest quality, regardless of societal position, and followed by the preparation of food as a visual explosion, taking great emphasis on color and composition. And with that sensory overload, all attention and exuberance are given to the moment and the meal about to be consumed. There is one consistent element shared by these various cultures. They approach food with a beingness of elation and joy. They consider the event of eating as a moment in time when all else effectively stops. From the start of preparation to the point of intake, food is an event identified as a positive, rewarding and hearty experience. This sensory and experiential satiety is not equal, but more than the actual sum of the parts of the meal ready to be eaten. The other reality evident with these two cultures, the French and the East Asian, is how they greatly outperform the United States and the rest of the world in terms of avoiding food-related health risks. Numerous studies have shown that the US is ranking far behind the French and Asians in terms of obesity, high cholesterol levels, and cardiovascular diseases. Food today is engineered to give us certain chemical satisfaction and cravings. Food is also a campaign that adorns citywide billboards and conveyed on digital screens through meticulous and marketing strategies. We are bombarded by other people's reasoning and ideas as to why we should enjoy food. Isn't it a better approach to become a cause of our own effects? But prior to changing our mindset towards food, our meals and accepting a new intention when taking in food, first and foremost, guilt should be chucked out the window. There is no place for guilt in our relationship with food. And in the absence of guilt, we then allow pleasure to overwhelm our experience. And not once, but for each and every meal to come. But be aware, pleasure is about time. Time to allow our whole being to take in the aromas, colors, textures, and finally, the tastes. Give it time and give your food attention. The more our senses and psyche are involved with our food, the more satiety we receive from our meal. 
and this satiety isn't served by the quantity of food itself, but by the energy and micro experiences we gain from giving value to each and every bite of our meal. Take a moment. Set a new intention about taking pleasure in all your meals. Allow your thoughts and senses to continuously orbit and intensely feed off the sense of pleasure. And when you're done, regardless of what was consumed, your eating will become a joyful act. The rewards on your daily life will be tremendous. And you might discover that at the very end, your relationship with food might become more demanding on the quality you consume, more moderate in the quantity you expect, and more grateful for the wonderful experience food has to offer. Thank you.